just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Senate President Bukala Saraki speaks on his silence on trial by the Code of Conduct Tribunal, agrees to appear before it tomorrow. Court of Appeals strikes out application for stay of arrest on the Senate President, says parties be served notice of application. Former presidential candidate Chief Olufalae has been kidnapped. His abductors are demanding a hundred million naira ransom. And Hungary's prime minister raises alarm, says Europe's border threatened by migrants. Right, just to quickly remind you that all our top stories are on our website, channelstv.com, and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. And do visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. And we urge you to interact with the eyewitness feature on the Android, iOS, and Windows platforms. If you have pictures or videos to share with us, Tap the application on your device, swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu, and follow the instructions. Now we have some pictures that were sent in to us. Um, let's look at them together. We begin with this one from Bielsa State, showing people our eyewitness reporter says are students of the Niger Delta University protesting an alleged cancellation of unionism in the institution by the school's management. Next is this report from Bini, the Edo State capital, showing traders displaying their wares on the road and the walkway. Our reporter says this is becoming a trend and calls for urgent action against it. Finally, in Lagos is this picture of heavy traffic on Funshaw Williams Avenue on the road to Ijora. There are no details about the cause of that particular gridlock. Well, thanks a lot for sending in all your pictures and do keep them coming in to us right here on Channels Television. The former secretary to the federal government and Alliance for Democracy presidential candidate Chief Olu Falae has been abducted. Chief Falae's wife, Mrs. Rachel Falae, confirmed the incident to Channels Television today. The public relations officer of the Ondo State Police Command, Wale Ogodo, also told our correspondent that the elder statesman was attacked on his way to his farm in a village near Akure earlier today. Latest reports say the kidnappers have contacted the family, demanding a hundred million naira ransom. Before his stint in politics, Chief Falae served as secretary to the government of the Federation and later as finance minister between 1986 and 1990 under the regime of General Ibrahim Babangida. With the lifting of the ban on political activity in the early 1990s, Chief Falae ran without success as presidential aspirant on the platform of the Social Democratic Party, but lost out. Following the cancellation of the June 12, 1993 presidential election and the emergence of General Sani Abacha as military dictator, Chief Falae became a prominent member of the National Democratic Coalition. Under Nadeko, he was one of the prominent leaders of the quest to restore democracy in Nigeria and was consequently arrested and jailed by the military government of Sani Abacha. Chief Ulufalae regained his freedom in June 1998 after Abacha's death and later contested the 1999 presidential elections on the joint platform of the Alliance for Democracy and the All People's Party. He, however, lost out to Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Since then, Chief Falae's involvement in politics has been at best peripheral, preferring instead to concentrate on his farm. Other workers who are an eyewitness with what transpired at the farm came and we saw two of them, they sustained an injury. Uh, the eyewitness, he said that they saw about six Fulani henchmen. We asked them whether, how do they know? They said they were communicating in Hausa language and with their intonation and others. It confirmed that they are Fulani henchmen. And while they were going to, some, to the dam, that Chief Olufala, he sent them, I think about uh, seven of them, that they should go and clear 
some some part at a dam that on their way those people accosted them stopped them and as of a chief olufalaye they were with gun sophisticated gun in the meantime, the Yoruba pan-social political group Afeniferi has condemned the abduction of Chief Olufalae on his farm, calling it exceptionally dangerous. Now, the group also described the incident as shameful and humiliating, calling on the federal government to secure the safety of all Nigerians. The group wants the president and the security agencies to expedite action on the immediate release of Chief Olufalae. According to Afeniferi, Government must rescue him from these vandals before things get out of hand. End of quote. We move away from that now, and the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, says the ongoing counter insurgency operations in the northeast will aim to seek the release of the abducted Chibok girls and others held by the Boko Haram group. According to him, the army is in the process of identifying where the girls are and will swing into action immediately to rescue them. The army chief spoke at the third quarter conference of the Nigerian army in Abuja, where he took stock of the operations of the Nigerian army since he assumed office. This is the first quarterly meeting that the Chief of Army Staff is having with the leadership of the Nigerian Army since he was sworn in. According to him, the meeting will afford them the opportunity to take stocks and re-strategize for operations in the Northeast with the aim of meeting up with the presidential deadline to stamp out Boko Haram. The ongoing operations in the Northeast is a priority for now. This is not only necessary but obligatory for us to meet Mr. President's time frame to bring the Boko Haram criminality in a, to a complete stop. The events of the past two months have been profoundly impactful and so require stock taking to enable us to prepare adequately to end the year on a high and victorious not. The Army Chief also stresses the need for professionalism in prosecuting the counter-insurgency crusade while announcing the approval for a special promotion for 5,000 gallant soldiers in the Northeast. When he was asked about the abducted Chibok girls, the Chief of Army staff assures of their release, even though the Army is yet to identify the exact spot the girls are kept. We know that the Chibo girls are somewhere. We are suspecting that they are somewhere. Um, we are not yet sure where they are, but we are suspecting they are somewhere. As soon as this is confirmed, we will attempt to see what we can do um, to bring them back in peace. And we believe that uh, we can find a solution to it very soon. It has been over 16 months since the Chibok school girls were abducted in April last year. It is hoped that this conference, aimed at reviewing the operations of the Nigerian army in the last three months, will not only chart a course for ending insurgency, but will also lead to the rescue of the Chibok girls. And to boost the morale of soldiers, the Nigerian army today promoted not less than 5,000 soldiers who've been involved in the fight against insurgents in the northeastern part of the country. The chief of army staff, while announcing the approval, says it was in a bid to, among other things, reposition its operations. He said the promotion was in line with the vision of the army command to encourage the troops and boost their combat readiness. 
Now, President Muhammadu Buhari will tomorrow host heads of state and government of the Economic Community of West African States at an extraordinary summit in Abuja. In a statement, the Senior Special Assistant to the President, Mr. Garba Shehu, says the extraordinary summit is to address the current political crisis in the West African state. President Buhari has condemned the coup in Burkina Faso and calls for the restoration of civil transitional authority. The President has also called for the return to democratic rule after elections due for October the 11th. Nigeria has donated 20 vans to the Burkina Faso Electoral Commission towards the successful conduct of their elections. Burkina Faso's presidential guard under General Gilbert Diondère seized power from the interim president Michel Cafando in a bloodless coup. At least 10 people have been killed in that instance and over 100 others injured in clashes which followed the coup. Now, the preliminary report on the cause of the Briscoe helicopter crash in Lagos has been made public. The Accident Investigation Bureau told journalists today that some components of the aircraft had separated mid-air before the crash. Although it's yet to conclude its investigation on the full reason for the crash, the Bureau stated clearly that since the components were meant to be together but were separated, that signals a default in the component structure. The crash occurred last month around Urushoki area of Lagos with 12 persons on board, including the two pilots. Six people died and six were rescued alive by officials of the National Emergency Management Agency. Input control push rod assembly had failed. The control push rod tube separated from the control rod end. With the bearing and the jam nut. The jam nut was loose and was not sitting against the control rod. The cause of the accident had not been fully determined as the investigation is still going on. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, Laboratory Preliminary, preliminary Meteor Meteorological Examination of the Ford Main rotor servo input control push rod revealed that the separation was a pre-impact condition. When the news at 10 returns, NACO commissions warehouse in the southeast and that will be after business news. Do join us again.